Is heaven a real place? Who will enter the heavenly kingdom? In this video, you will learn the facts about heaven and how much Jesus wants you to be there. Keep watching. Is there a place out there in the universe that is perfect? A city designed by God. A place where there is no suffering, no sickness, no death, no sin. A place of unselfish love and perfect beauty. Or is heaven just another fantasy, another fairy tale like all other fairy tales we've been told? A fairy tale to stimulate our imaginations. And if heaven is a real place, can we ever hope to go and live there? Let's begin in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. All down through the ages, the patriarchs and the prophets have longed for heaven. Christians have considered themselves pilgrims in this world. The Bible tells us in regards to the patriarch Abraham, Hebrews 11 verse 10, for he looked for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Is there such a city? A city designed and built by God himself. Let's read in the Bible, John 14, 1 to 3. Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. Where's the Father's house? That's in heaven. So Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a real place, not a fantasy, not a cloud. Heaven is just as real as Manila, Moscow, Poland, United States, or any other place. It's a real place for real people. We have hope beyond this world because the place we're going to is a real place. John, exiled on the lonely island of Patmos, was given a vision of the new Jerusalem. He describes it in Revelation 21 verse 2. He calls it the holy city. This is a description of the new Jerusalem. John here describes the holy city as a bride dressed for her husband. Revelation 19 verse 7 says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride shall make herself ready. How does the Bible describe this amazing city? Number one, it has a name. The city is called by the name New Jerusalem. Revelation 21 verse 2, it has a size. The city is perfectly square. Its perimeter is 12,000 furlongs, equivalent to 1,500 miles. It is 375 miles long on each side. It has walls. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick with a radiance and beauty beyond description, nearly 20 stories high and solid jasper. It has gates. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The 12 gates were 12 pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Revelation 21 verse 12 and 13 and 21. It has foundations. The wall of the city had 12 foundations decorated with every kind of precious stones. The first foundation was a jasper, the second sapphire, the third a gate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth burial, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst from Revelation 21, 14, 19, and 20. The city has twelve full, complete foundations, each one made of precious stone. Every color of the rainbow is represented, so at the distance, the city will appear to be resting upon a rainbow. The street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. The city with all of its precious stones, gold and shimmering beauty, will be lighted with the glory of God. Its breathtaking majesty and purity is compared to a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Christ returns, the righteous dead resurrected, the righteous living change, the righteous caught up together and taken to heaven. 
wicked dead remain dead, wicked living slain. During the thousand years, the righteous are in heaven and the earth is desolate. At the end of the thousand years, the holy city Jerusalem, apparently to the Mount of Olives as indicated in Zechariah 14 verse 4. Then the wicked are resurrected and they with Satan attack the city. But then fire falls from heaven and consumes them. In this manner, this world is purified. That is hellfire. It takes place right here on earth. After God finishes purifying this world, He makes a new heavens and a new earth. We have the second advent when Christ comes back. That's right after the seven plagues. All the righteous then go to heaven and for a thousand years, the earth is desolate. The wicked are all dead. Then at the end of the thousand years, the holy city descends. Next, the second resurrection takes place. And after that, the earth is purified by hellfire. Finally, God makes a new heavens and new earth, which will be our eternal home. Where are we today on the timeline? Right there, just before the plagues. We are very near the final events. What thrilling promises has God made to the people who enter His kingdom? The Lord in person will live with them, as says in Revelation 21 verse 3. They will never become bored. There will be pleasures forevermore. There will be no more death, pain, tears, sorrow, sickness, hospitals, operations, tragedy, disappointment, trouble, hunger or thirst. They will not get tired. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Every person will be physically whole in every way. The deaf will hear, the blind will see, and the paralyzed will run. According to this verse, jealousy, fear, hatred, falsehood, envy, impurity, cynicism, filth, worry, and all evil will not exist in God's kingdom. People will no longer be burdened with the worries and cares that distract and damage them. There will be no more anxiety. Time will become eternity. And the pressures and deadlines of earth today will be gone forever. There won't be any hospitals in heaven because we won't need them. No doctors, no nurses or cancer, no coronavirus or anything else related to sickness. Also, there will be no handicapped people there. When we see the new world with our own eyes, it will be far more beautiful than the word picture we're getting today. We're going to find there the fountain of youth. It's called the river of life. Revelation 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There won't be any famines or starvation in the new world. There will be no more graveyards. Never again will we feel the sting of death. The fact is, we won't even grow old. We will have bodies. However, we're not going to be some kind of formless spirits like many people say. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body. Does Jesus have a real body? The answer is yes. You can read it in Luke 24. He went back to heaven with a real body of flesh and bones, and He's going to give us a similar body, a glorified body of flesh and bones. When He comes back, we get a new body. Would you like to get a new body? Think about this. If we went to heaven in the form of a disembodied soul, we couldn't even enjoy the reality of heaven. Heaven would be just a boring, unrealistic place. We wouldn't even have any teeth to bite the fruit of the tree of life with. The whole idea of disembodied spirits 
going to heaven steals away the beauty and reality of heaven. You say, if we have a new body, will we recognize each other? Oh yes. Let's read that from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. Each feature will be refined and beautified, but we'll still know each other. Will there be young children in God's kingdom? If so, will they grow up? The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. You shall go out and grow like stall fed calves. There will be many young children in the holy city, and these young ones will grow up. Ever since the fall of man, we have degenerated much in stature, intellect, and vitality, but all of this will be restored. There would be people in heaven from every nation of the earth. Revelation 7 verse 9, Filipinos, Chinese, Australians, Indonesians, and Americans there. The question for you is, will you be there? That's a question that you can only answer based on how you are responding to God's leading in your life. I can imagine Jesus lines up in this great hollow square and he goes around the square and puts a crown on the head of each person. Then he opens wide those pearly gates and says, Welcome home, children. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And as we step in the holy city, Jerusalem, I'm sure our first thought will be something like this. Wow, Jesus left this beautiful place and went down to that dark world and died to save us? We will not realize the great sacrifice Jesus made until we see heaven. When we see the glory that He left behind, we will understand a little more of the sacrifice He made. Whatever bad habit you had to give up, whatever sacrifice you had to make will seem so insignificant in comparison with the glory of heaven. Will you be there? Jesus wants you to be there. It's far better than I've described. Will you be there to have Jesus take you to the mansion He's prepared just for you? If you miss heaven, you miss everything worth living for. But if you gain heaven, you gain it all. Kindly type in the comment section, I surrender all to Jesus. I want to walk those golden streets with you. Let us all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.